Hi everyone. Uh, in this talk, we are going to look at a, a very uh, classical topic in uh, cryptography, namely uh, that of security of uh, password hashing um, algorithms in the uh, presence of pre-processing attacks. Uh, my name is Priya Farshim, and this is joint work with uh, Stefano Tesoro from uh, University of Washington. So passwords uh, are uh, one of the most commonly used authentication mechanisms in uh, cryptography and security. And uh, typically we would use a hash of a password in place of the password itself for authentication. Uh, this is to uh, provide some uh, form of uh, resilience against, for example, uh, leakage of a database of password passwords where you would get to see the hash of passwords but not the passwords themselves. In fact, uh, sometimes we even go beyond this and we use hash of password as a secret key in some application. For example, we might uh, derive a secret key from a password and then uh, use it to encrypt data. Uh, the setting that we are uh, considering here is one where uh, an attacker is uh, interested in uh, attacking uh, multiple users and uh, it is not uh, targeting any particular user, but uh, is basically trying to compromise as many users as uh, uh, it can. And in doing this, uh, it may uh, use uh, pre-processing techniques such as use of rainbow tables to speed up its attack. And uh, typically in uh, such settings, the hash function is actually assumed to be secure. Uh, in the sense that it uh, behaves like a random oracle. And what the adversary tries to do is to exploit the uh, low entropy of uh, human generated passwords. Uh, the convention and wisdom here is that instead of hash of passwords, we actually are going to uh, store salted hashes of password. That is, we have some pub public randomness as uh, salt. Uh, and we are going to uh, hash this salt together with the password and store this in our database. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the general uh, uh, idea is that this salting will defeat pre-processing because uh, if you, for example, have distinct salts, uh, the distinct salts here will actually result in a domain separation of this uh, hash function which means that uh, basically a separate effort will be needed uh, for uh, cracking each password. And uh, in fact, if these uh, passwords, these, these salts are also unpredictable, uh, uh, actually we are going to defeat pre-processing because uh, essentially the hash function that we are going to use in uh, uh, hashing the password is going to be unpredictable because we don't know this salt part of the, uh, the hash function. So one goal of this talk is to formalize this conventional wisdom. So uh, there are two lines of uh, related works uh, here. Uh, one is a long series of works on pre-processing starting with the work of Gennaro and Trevisan in 2000. And then uh, a work of Undel from 2007, uh, which looked at uh, random oracles with auxiliary input. Uh, going to the work of De Travis and Atelsiani, and then a number of work by Dodi Sutal, uh, which develops techniques in uh, proving security uh, in the presence of pre processing. Uh, in this talk, uh, we are uh, particularly going to rely on a work uh, by uh, uh, Coretti, Dodi School, and Steinberger from 2018, which uh, introduced the uh, technique of bit fixing random oracle to uh, uh, prove results in the pre-processing model. Another important work here is that of Bellare, Ristam, Part, and Tesaro uh, from Crypto 2012, that they, uh, where they highlighted the need for multi-instance security in password-based crypto. Let's look at these two settings in a little bit more detail. So here's the pre-processing setting where the adversary uh, A0, which is the pre-processing adversary, gets the random oracle fully, the full table of the random oracle, and outputs some auxiliary information sigma. Uh, and then in the online phase of the attack, A1 is going to run with sigma and the hash function in the game uh, to win some security here. 
So this is a general template to upgrade notions of security from uh, 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 setting without uh, pre-processing to one with pre-processing in idealized models. Uh, what about multi-instance security? In the multi-instance setting, uh, uh, the adversary, for example, gets a bunch of passwords, hash of password one to hash of password M, and its goal is to recover all of these passwords. So note that the setting is somewhat different from multi-user security, where you would again get a bunch of passwords, but your goal is to recover only one of them. So here we are interested in recovering all of them because uh, we are interested in adversaries that are uh, trying to uh, uh, recover passwords of as many users as they can. Okay, uh, so uh, the perspective here is that in such a uh, multi-instance uh, setting, the, uh, ideally, the effort that the adversary needs to put to uh, compromise M passwords should scale linearly with M. In this setting, however, where we have not used uh, salts, one can see that the uh, adversarial advantage is actually bounded below by T over N, where uh, N is the, uh, let's say, the size of the domain where these passwords are taken from, and T is the number of uh, queries that the adversary makes to the random oracle. In fact, you can see this as uh, an adversary which makes T queries to this hash function is going to recover the uh, ith password with uh, probability T over N for each sing uh, uh, single instance. And then essentially these uh, games are uh, independent. So the probability that you're going to recover all of them is T over N to the N. So if you think about a pass, uh, an, an, an adversary which actually queries all of the domain, where T equals N, then you can see that the adversary can actually recover all of the passwords. So put differently, if you have T over N, over M is roughly equal to one, then we get that T is roughly equal to N. And as you see here, the uh, term required by the adversary is not scaling at all with uh, M, the number of users. Now, if you come uh, if you come to the uh, salted setting where we are using salts to hash passwords, we do actually get a bound that uh, scales with M, at least for uh, certain uh, adversaries. So here we have an uh, you can consider an adversary which has a budget of T queries, and then it distributes them uh, over all these M different uh, hashed keys with different salts, and then tries to uh, guess the password using the budget of T over M queries per salt. And then we will get a bound like this. So now if you do a calculation like before, if you set this roughly equal to one, then we will get that T is roughly equal to M times N. And here you see that uh, the time required by the adversary is scaling uh, linearly in M. So one of the contributions of this paper is actually proved also upper bounds on the adversarial advantage here. Okay, so as I mentioned, the uh, goal of this paper is to uh, uh, understand uh, uh, password hashing in the presence of multiple instances and uh, pre-processing effort. And put together, we have these two settings and we are actually combining them in this work. So in this work, we are going to consider three different notions. There are three different settings. Uh, one is the setting without salts and distinct salts. These are interesting from a historical point of view and also a more theoretical point of view related to amplification. But also uh, we are going to look at random salts. And this is the setting which is most relevant to practice, but is also of course uh, interesting from a theoretical point of view. So to gain some uh, intuition towards this problem, let's look at the multi-instance uh, uh, extension of the Hellman's space-time trade-off algorithm. So here we have a permutation pi, and uh, we create a graph, a functional graph, where we start with some from some point, 
and then we repeatedly apply the permutation. And let's assume for now uh, uh, that uh, uh, this permutation, uh, this uh, permutation has one cycle in the sense that this permutation, uh, this functional graph basically covers the old domain of the permutation. So this is the, uh, this is the graph that we built. And uh, what we do next is that we take S points on this uh, graph, which are of distance N over S apart. And for each of them, we store a point, we store, a, uh, we uh, form a pointer to T over N steps behind. Okay, so these are pointers to T over N steps behind. This means that if I have a, a point, say this red point here that I want to recover, if this red point happens to be in this segment, all I need to do is to start applying the permutation here, get to this point, chase the pointer back, uh, apply the permutation further, and stop right before I get to this point, and then I have recovered the pre-image. So what's the probability that this point ends up being in the segment? Well, the length of the segment is t over m, the length of this segment is n over s, so this is the probability that one of them ends up being there. So the probability that all of them ends up being there is, is uh, st over mn to the power of m. So uh, keep that bound, bound in mind uh, when we come to our security bounds later on. So to get any form of security in password-based cryptography, we actually need to have passwords which are unguessable. And for this, we actually need some form of measure of unguessability for passwords. And BRT uh, uh, formulated such a notion. They considered a uh, setting, an unguessability password, where passwords are generated, vector of passwords are generated, uh, together perhaps with some leakage uh, information Z. And then uh, the adversary is run with a test oracle and a corrupt oracle, where the corrupt oracle will simply return the ith password in on query i, and the test oracle uh, gets a guess password from the adversary and an index i and checks whether this password matches the ith passwords. And the goal of the adversary here is to actually win all of these instances, that is set all of these flags to be true. And we measure uh, the advantage here uh, by considering the maximal advantage of an adversary, of any adversary in this case. Now, how does this relate to the known notions of unguessability for distributions? Actually, if you consider a setting where you have M guesses, M is the number of passwords in the uh, system, that's the number of passwords asked by T, then uh, it's not too hard to see that this measure is actually related to the uh, mean entropy of the password, or in this case, average mean entropy of the passwords. Uh, the case with corruptions uh, is a little more complicated, and uh, there doesn't seem to be a notion in uh, information uh, theory that captures this nicely. Uh, so for that pur purpose, we're actually going to look at the case where the adversary does C queries and does N minus C uh, test uh, 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 queries, so C corruptions, M minus C guesses, as uh, our basic measure uh, when there are corruptions. So our first uh, 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 theorem is a theorem that relates uh, the unguessability of passwords when the adversary has T queries to, the, to this basic measure that we have. And uh, the actual uh, proof for this is uh, uh, not too complicated. Suppose that I have an adversary here and uh, I want to convert it to an adversary here, which can only make M minus C queries. The way I'm going to do this is that I'm actually going to uh, guess which of these uh, M minus C queries out of the T queries that uh, the adversary makes to the test oracle are going to return true i.e. they're going to be the correct uh, guesses. I'll guess that, uh, that, that set of indices. Uh, I will uh, relate these. Uh, so these, uh, these queries are then relayed 
to the uh, oracle that the adversary gets uh, in this game with m minus c test queries. The rest of the queries are an answered with f, with bottom, with false. And the corruption queries are also related. So the c corruption queries are related to uh, uh, the adversary's oracle here, uh, the adversary, uh, the adversary's corrupt oracle here. So if I have guessed this set of m minus c indices out of p correctly, then this reduction is perfect. And whenever this adversary wins here, uh, this adversary here with only m minus c queries to the test oracle wins here. This argument, this uh, rather simple argument, actually resolves an open question left in BRT, where uh, the author actually considered the setting where there is a bound ti, uh, a priori bound ti for each i. And uh, this is a somewhat uh, important restriction in the sense that uh, actually an adversary in uh, practice could actually adapt the number of queries that it is making as it makes progress in uh, different instances. Okay, so far we have looked at uh, the unguessability of passwords and uh, how it relates to our basic, basic measures of unguessability. And next we are going to actually look at uh, uh, hashed and salted passwords. So for this, let me uh, start with a notion of uh, security for unrecoverability of passwords in the auxiliary input random Oracle model. So this is a game which uh, goes like this. A random Oracle is chosen from some domain and range. Then the adversary is given the full code of the uh, random Oracle and it outputs some uh, pre-processing information signal. This is as in the pre-processing template. Then the passwords are picked. And then we generate uh, salts. So there could be uh, uh, multiple salts per passwords. So M is the uh, instance count and L is the number of, uh, let's say sessions per user. So you have L passwords per user. Then the ith password is, uh, is, uh, is hashed together with these salts and the keys are computed. And the adversary is now provided with the keys, the salts, the sigma, the auxiliary information related to the random oracle, and Z, which is some leakage information on passwords. And its goal is to guess the whole vector of passwords. And while the adversary is doing, that, doing this, of course, it has access to the random oracle H, as well as a corrupt query where it can corrupt uh, users and get their passwords. So this is a very na natural notion of unrecoverability of passwords in the auxiliary input uh, model. So actually to analyze this, uh, analyze uh, such games in the auxiliary input random Oracle model, uh, there are a number of techniques. Uh, one of them is the compression technique, uh, which has been uh, used uh, successfully in various works before. Uh, and here we are actually going to uh, look at the, uh, a different technique known as, known as the pre-sampling or the bit fixing random Oracle technique, where instead of a uh, pre-processing information that depends on the random Oracle, you're going to consider an adversary which outputs pre-processing -pre information which is independent of the random Oracle, but instead it gets to uh, output a list of pre-assignments L which contain uh, entries of the form point xi maps to yi. And what we are going to do then in the online phase of the game is that uh, we are going to run the game with respect to a, a random oracle, which is random everywhere, except for points in L where uh, it should be compatible with the uh, assignments in L. So that is the bit fixing random oracle model. And uh, Coretti, Dodis, Gore, and Steinberger uh, in 2018 uh, proved that if you have bounds in the bit fixing uh, random oracle model, then you can actually drive bounds in the auxiliary input random oracle uh, uh, model. So uh, what uh, we do in the paper, we apply this uh, technique and we drive a, uh, uh, on recoverability bound in the bit fixing random Oracle model for the case where the KDF function is the random Oracle itself. Salts are uniform in K. There are possibly L instances uh, of salts per password. 
and we have a password sampler which outputs m uh, m passwords. I won't go into uh, this count here, but uh, in a second I will come to the uh, uh, to what this bound actually means. So in the paper, we also derive bounds for uh, other cases where we have a general soft generation uh, algorithm, not a uniform one. Uh, and I refer you to the paper uh, to check those theorems out. So what are our main bounds? So uh, we have six main bounds. Uh, corresponding to the cases where we have no salts, we have possibly known distinct salts and uniform salts, and we have the case where there is no processing. So S was the uh, 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 the uh, bit length of the pre-processing information sigma, or we have some large amount of pre-processing. So let's look at these bounds one by one. So for the case where we have no salts and no pre-processing, we get a bound of the form T to the N over M. Recall that this uh, matches the bound uh, we had earlier on, the lower bound on the adversarial ad advantage that we had uh, earlier. This is an upper bound. For the case with distinct cell, uh, salts, we get an upper bound, which is of the form T over M with an M in the denominator. Uh, showing that uh, the adversarial effort uh, will scale uh, linearly in N as long as salts are distinct. And for the uniform case, we also get a similar bound. Uh, 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 for example, if NL over K is a small, uh, because the uh, K, the uh, uh, size of the salt space is large, uh, we actually get a similar bound. So let's look at the case with uh, pre-processing, which is the focus of the work. So in this case, we get an upper bound. So with the case with no salts, we get an upper bound of the form ST over MN. Note that this matches the uh, multi-instance Hellman algorithm that we had. For the known distinct salt case, we get a bound of this form with the N squared in the uh, denominator. What this is basically saying is that in order to match this bound here for multi-instance Hellman that we had, we, for example, have to do uh, M times as much pre-processing one for each salt. So if S is replaced with MS because we are increasing our pre-processing effort, then the Ms will cancel out and we get this. So most, uh, uh, int uh, the most relevant bound for practice that we have is the bound over here. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, the case with bit pre-processing and uniform salts. So in this bound, if you see, uh, we have a term which is independent of S and a term which is dependent on S. And this term is multiplied by a value which is ML over K. And if uh, the salt of salt space is big, then uh, this, uh, this term is basically negligible. And we fall back to a setting where we have T over MN uh, meaning that the adversarial effort scales linearly with N and second pre-processing is defeated. There is no dependency on S. So in the paper, uh, let me just briefly mention that we also look at a composable notion of KDF security uh, with auxiliary information. This is following uh, the work of Bellara, Ristenpart and Tesaro. Uh, and uh, we prove an appropriate composition theorem for this uh, notion in the sense that uh, uh, security in a multi-instance environment with auxiliary in input is upper bounded by uh, uh, the, this, uh, uh, the advantage in this KDF game with auxiliary input, uh, plus the advantage in the guessing game, in the multi-instance guessing game, uh, and plus advantage in a single instance of the game with a random, uh, with random keys. So uh, here we don't have a multi-instance uh, uh, term, only a single instance term. And this is of no concern because the keys here are random and this, uh, this uh, uh, term is still. I should mention that if one is looking at, a, a look at this from a theoretical perspective, one may want to uh, drive even sharper down on this. 
And uh, in the paper, we look at the uh, uh, security of a uh, iterated hash function where we take a hash function and we iterate it R times and we drive a uh, DFKDF bound for this in the bit fixing random Oracle model. And then we apply the CDGS machinery and optimize for P to get a bound in the auxiliary input setting. So that uh, concludes my 